hello everyone welcome to this video today we will discuss about kinematics of curvilinear motion i am amit raheja working as assistant professor in aissms iit college pune so let us start with the video contents of this video kinematics of curvilinear motion we will discuss about its equation of motion and different types of coordinate systems in which we uh, dis analyze the curvilinear motion so basically let us understand what is curvilinear motion so the motion of a particle is said to be curvilinear when it moves along a curved path curvilinear motion can either be in uh, two dimension or three dimension so over here you can observe the example of plain cur curvilinear motion and the example is in this way the motion of the particle along a curved path which lies in a single plane so you can observe in the image that the aeroplane is taking off from the airport so for a short time uh, during the takeoff and the landing planes generally follow plane curvilinear motion that is motion along a curved path now this motion uh, uh, of the curvilinear motion um, can be described in three different component systems that is curvilinear motion by rectangular component system curvilinear motion by tangent and normal component system and curvilinear motion by polar coordinate system now in rectilinear motion the displacement velocity acceleration was always directed along the path of the particle whereas the in curvilinear motion its change in uh, there is change in its direction and that too at every instant so therefore the analysis of curvilinear motion is done in these three different component systems let us understand one by one now rectilinear motion by rectangular component system now as we say <coughs> analysis of motion we basically describe the position velocity and acceleration with respect to some axis and uh, over here we will discuss about the plane curvilinear motion so let us say a particle is moving along a curved path in a plane and the position of the particle uh, is given by the point p now you can observe in the image given over here the position vector is represented by r which is drawn from the origin which is our fixed reference axis to the particle uh, to the path of the particle and this is called as position vector so as the particle will move along the curved path the value of r will go on changing with respect to time and let us see uh, velocity in rectangular component system for such a curvilinear motion now after a sh uh, short time interval delta t the particle has occupied its new position p dash so simultaneously position vector r bar will also change to r dash bar right so the position vector p uh, p and p dash is the change in position vector which is given by delta r and the time interval during this change in position is given by delta t so the average velocity comes out to be delta t uh, sorry delta r bar upon delta t and for a very small interval of time delta t we apply the limits that is limit delta t tending to 0 for delta r bar upon delta t which gives us velocity dr by dt hence for a small time interval the particle moves a distance delta s along the curve and the magnitude of velocity uh, is called <coughs> speed and is given by the relation speed uh, by finding out the modulus of v velocity vector so which is given by ds by dt in curvilinear motion we observe that the velocity of the particle is always tangent to the path at every instant let us discuss about the acceleration of the same as the direction of the velocity is changing continuously uh, at 
any instant in the curvilinear motion it is responsible for developing the acceleration at every instant so average acceleration a is given by delta v bar upon delta t and if we want to find out the instantaneous acceleration then by applying limits delta t tending to zero we get acceleration as dv by dt now what about the uh, <coughs> rectangular component system we have the rectangular components that is the position vector r bar uh, is written as r bar is in the form of x into i vector plus y into j vector plus z into k vector where i j k are the unit vectors along the uh, three axes that is x y and z and uh, similarly if i want to find out what is the velocity i will differentiate the position vector r bar with respect to time t uh, we will get v bar equal to dr by dt which is uh, vx that is the component of velocity along x direction into unit vector i plus vy into j vector plus vz into k vector similarly for acceleration a is given by dv by dt differentiating the uh, v bar equation we get ax into i bar plus ay into j bar plus ez into k bar and if we want to find out the magnitude of the position velocity and acceleration it is simply obtained by taking the root over of uh, their components acting along the all the three directions for instance r is given by under root x square plus y square plus z square velocity is given by taking the root over of vx square plus vy square plus vz square similarly for acceleration now this uh, velocity vector vx uh, mix an angle with the x axis which is denoted by alpha and uh, when once we find out the direction its relation is given in this way cos alpha is given by x by r which is nothing but vx upon v or ax upon a if we are finding out the position then it is uh, this formula is used that is x by r if we are finding out the inclination of velocity then it will be vx by v or if we are finding out the inclination of acceleration with respect to x axis then it is given by ax by a and accordingly beta is the angle of uh, the position velocity or acceleration made with y axis similarly gamma is the angle made with z axis so while dealing uh, with the coplanar motion or motion taking place in single plane we consider the particle is moving in the xy plane only and its rectangular component system will be uh, as follows you can observe in the table given below r bar uh, is given by xi plus yj velocity vector v bar is given by vx into i vector plus vy into j vector accordingly acceleration is given by ax into i vector plus ay into j vector and uh, similarly we can find out the magnitude of position velocity and acceleration also we can find out its direction in which the velocity is moving along x as well as along y by referring to these formulas now we will understand the second coordinate system that is tangent and normal component system now as the name suggests tangent and normal component system now when the particle is moving along the curved path it is uh, very convenient to describe the motion of the particle using the uh, cartesian coordinates and when the path is known that time we can describe the motion by referring to the normal and the tangent directions of the particle what is the major difference in tangent and normal component system that is in the normal tangent coordinate system the origin is located on the particle as you can observe in the image given below the particle is tracing a curved path and at any instant the origin is on the particle as compared to the previous component system uh, we do not 
write down the equation of motion of the particle with respect to a fixed reference axis in the tangent and normal coordinates component system the origin is moving with the particle and the normal direction is obviously directed inside the curve that is towards the center and tangent to the path at that instant so t axis is the tangent to the path at that instant considered and it is considered positive in the direction of the motion so you can observe uh, if the particle is moving in the anti clockwise direction as shown over here so that will be considered as positive and if it is moving in the clockwise direction then the clockwise direction will be considered positive for analyzing the motion of the particle and the as i told you normal axis is perpendicular to the tangential axis and the positive direction is towards the curvature of the curve so normal and tangent component systems the uh, position vector is denoted by u n into and u t so the center of curvature being o always lies on the concave side of the curve the radius of curvature rho is defined as the perpendicular distance from the curve to the center of curvature at that point so the position of the particle at any instant is defined by the distance along the curve from the fixed reference point sometimes or uh, as uh, we consider the motion of the particle so initial position and final position then the distance or uh, the distance traveled by the particle will be the difference of the initial position uh, difference between the final position and the initial position the velocity in the normal tangent coordinate system is a uh, velocity vector is always along the tangent to the path so the magnitude is determined by taking the time derivative of the path function which is uh, given in terms of time t so v velocity is equal to v into ut whereas where v is given by s ds by dt and this is the scalar speed so here v defines the magnitude of velocity that is speed and ut defines the direction of the velocity vector now coming to acceleration acceleration is given by different of uh, the change in velocity over the time period so dv by dt and when once we differentiate dv by dt we get v dot into ut plus v into ut dot where uh, the magnitude of velocity and ut dot they represent the rate of change in the direction of ut and after a mathematical uh, manipulation the acceleration vector can be expressed as a is given by at into ut plus an into un so there are two components of acceleration vector along the normal direction as well as along the tangential direction so the tangential component is the tangent to the curve and the direction of increasing or decreasing velocity so the tangential component is basically the is uh, basically denoting the direction of increasing or decreasing velocity that is change in velocity and the normal and the tan component of acceleration is always directed towards the center of curvature and is given by an is equal to v square by rho where v is the velocity and if we are interested in finding out the magnitude of acceleration it is given by taking the root over of an square plus at square these are few special cases in normal tangent coordinate or component system the particle moving along a straight line then for such a case the radius of curvature will be infinite where you will get an is zero and the total acceleration will be given by at which is the change in velocity second is that the particle moves along a curve at constant speed so uh, for constant speed its tangential acceleration which is given by velocity will be equal to zero hence the total acceleration will be given by the normal acceleration which is 
given by the formula v square by rho so the normal component represents the time rate of change in the direction of velocity and if the particle moving along the curved path is uh, following constant or uniform acceleration then in that case our tangential acceleration uh, is calculated by using the three kinematical equations s is equal to uh, initial distance plus uh, initial velocity into time t plus half into the tangential acceleration into the t square similarly v is equal to u plus a into t where a will be replaced by the tangential acceleration and v square is equal to u square plus 2 a into s where s naught and v naught are the initial position and velocity of the particle at time t equal to 0 however uh, <clears throat> the particle moving along a curved path if uh, the path is expressed as a function of the uh, x then the radius of curvature rho at any point is calculated by the formula rho is equal to 1 plus dy by dx bracket square raised to 3 by 2 divided by d2 by, by dx square that is we basically find out the uh, differentiation of the equation of the curve which is given in the form of x that is y as function of x thank you